Hello friends, welcome you all to the next lecture of the JC eConnect series of online lectures. We are into module 4 and dealing with design for shear. Up to now we have finished first type of analysis example where we have concentrated on finding the principal stresses generated. Now in these examples or in the second part we will be concentrating on the specific modes of shear failure in pre-stress concrete beam. As initially mentioned the shear failure in case of pre-stress concrete beam is because of two types. First category is the web shear cracking and the second category is the flexural shear cracking. So as we can see in the figure the web shear generally originates from the supports. This type of shear failure is independent of the effect of flexure and is mainly caused due to the shear force acting at the supports. Whereas when we see the flexural shear cracks they originate from the center portion of the beam where the bending or the flexural forces are dominating. Hence these cracks have an effect of both flexural as well as shear. So now in the further slides we will be discussing about web shear cracking and flexural shear cracking individually. So web shear crack starts from an interior point when the local principal stresses exceed the tensile strength of concrete. These types of cracks developed in highly pre-stress beams with large concentrated loads near the supports. Members having thin web sections are more susceptible towards these type of cracks. So here we can clearly understand that the shear cracks have nothing to do with the bending or the flexural effect. These are mainly caused because of the shear forces acting and if we have a thin section or the web section dimensions are lower more of the web shear cracks can be developed or if we have a concentrated load placed near to the supports the chances of web shear cracks is higher. The ultimate shear resistance of precious concrete sections with web shear cracking without flexure cracks is mainly governed by the limiting value of principal tensile stresses developed in concrete. The failure is assumed to take place when principal tension exceeds the tensile strength of concrete. So web shear cracks are developed when the tension caused because of this web shear crosses the maximum permissible tensile strength of concrete. As per IS 1343 the ultimate shear resistance of concrete due to web shear cracks is given by the relation VCW is equal to BW into bracket I by S into square root of FT square plus FCP into FT. So this is our equation 1. This is the basic equation which is employed for obtaining the ultimate shear resistance due to web shear. Now in this the value of I by S varies from 0.67 times of H for rectangular sections to 0.85 times of H for flanged sections. So the Indian code and British code have specified some modifications in this formula and employing those modifications we get the second relationship as or say equation 1b as VCW is equal to 0.67 BWH into square root of FT square plus 0.8 FCP into FT where VCW is the ultimate shear resistance, BW is the breadth of the web of the member, H is the overall depth of the member, FCP is the compressive pre-stress at centroid of the section, FT is the tensile strength of concrete and FT is equal to 0.24 times of root FCK. 
So now this is the modified formula wherein the term i and s are eliminated. Now here the value of 0.67 is somewhat lower for the plant sections and again this formula does not take into consideration the impact of eccentricity or the variation in the cable shapes which are provided. Hence this line which is written here if there are inclined cables the shearing force VCW is increased by an amount equal to the vertical component of pre-stressing force in the above equation. That means to this equation one more term needs to be added. So now here we see that last term plus mu p into sin theta mu p into sin theta is nothing but the vertical component of the shear force which occurs when the cable has an parabolic profile or the cable is making an angle. So in the previous topic also while discussing in the examples we have seen how important is that vertical component because it automatically increases the resistance or reduces the shear. Hence this formula becomes very important that is equation 1c which we will be using in many of the examples wherever we get an eccentric profile of the cable. So here mu stands for the area of pre-stressing cables, P is the pre-stressing force applied and theta is the angle subtended. So note down this formula we have three formulas 1a which is the basic formula, 1b which is the formula using the variations wherein we employ the factor 0 0.67 to replace i and s value directly whereas this is the third formula which is more practical because in this we are not using any factors because we read that in the code book it is mentioned clearly that using that factors 0 0.67 okay we are conservative okay we are on the conservative side especially for the flanged sections. So remember this formula is very much useful that is equation 1c for your flanged section that is I sections or T sections. Next let us move on to flexural shear cracks. Flexural shear cracks are first initiated by flexural cracks in the inclined direction. These cracks develop when the combined shear and flexure action leads to development of principal tensile stresses which exceed the tensile strength of concrete members. In members without shear reinforcement the inclined shear cracks extend to the compression phase resulting in sudden explosive failure. This is also referred to as diagonal tensile mode of failure. So friends in the previous videos we have already discussed the principal stresses ok we get two types of principal stresses compressive and tensile. So here which becomes important is the principal tensile stress. So flexural shear cracks are developed mainly because of bending they produce principal tensile strength and if this principal tensile stress exceeds the tensile strength carrying capacity of concrete we get flexural shear cracks and if it goes beyond one limit there is a chance of failure of the section. Hence in such cases the design of shear reinforcement for pre-stress concrete which will be in the further lectures becomes very very much important. So as per your IS code the formula given for ultimate shear resistance of concrete in a section due to flexure is VCF is equal to bracket open 1 minus 0 0.55 FPE divided by FP into bracket tau C BWD plus M0 divided by M into V. Now while designing it should not be less than 0.1 BWD square root of FCK. In analysis example we have to use just equation 2 that second part of that equation does not matter much but when we are designing we need to check for it. Now the terms FPC is equal to effective pre-stress after all losses 
we shall not be put together greater than 0.6 p. F p is equal to characteristic strength of processing steel. Tau c is the ultimate shear capacity which we have to take from the table in the IS code. B w is equal to breadth of the member. D is the effective depth of the effective depth to tendons. M naught is the moment necessary to produce zero stresses in concrete at extreme tension fibers. M naught is calculated using the relation 0.8 F p t into I divided by Y b where F p t is the concrete compressive stress at extreme tension fibers due to effective processing force. I is the second moment of area and Y b is the distance of the extreme tension fibers from the centroid of the beam section. V and M are the shear force at the bending moments respectively at the section. So now here we come to know the combination of various chapters which we have studied. So here in that equation F p c effective pre-stress after losses. Okay. So we can frame one big example where you have to come from calculation of bending moment then calculation of losses then come to shear design and further go for flexural design and shear design sorry okay so don't worry about this formula this is available in the code book directly so this is a big equation the most important thing here is we have to properly remember the parameters which are mentioned in this equation too as it is a big equation find each and every parameter substitute and get the value of vcf now many times few values are directly given which we can easily use them for finding the results so in this video we have mainly discussed about the modes of failure the two types of failures then discuss the formulas for finding the ultimate shear resistance of concrete subjected to web shear or flexural shear. So we have equations 1a, 1b, 1c and equation number 2. Okay. So equation 1c becomes important in case of plant section with cables having an inclination. Okay. But that term which is mu into p into sin theta has to be given proper importance even if the section is rectangular and the cable profiles are inclined. Now the equation 2 is a straightforward one where we get the ultimate shear resistance of concrete with respect to flexural shear. So please note down these formulas in the next video as we will be discussing examples based on these formulas it will become easy for you all. Thank you.